live from the Julia Morgan Ballroom in San Francisco. Extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering Structure 2015. Now your host, George Gilbert. We're back, we're live at uh, Structure 2015 in the Julia Morgan Ballroom in downtown San Francisco. Uh, we have with us uh, another very distinguished guest. Derek Harris has been involved in the uh, content and, and organization of pretty much all the structure conferences going back s eight years, pretty mm, much? Yeah, let's say 2009. Okay, seven <laughs> years. All right, I was never a math major. That's all right. <laughs> I wasn't with Gig Element for the first structure conference. I okay. was just an attendee. Well, so Derek, tell us, so you've got you know, a pretty long, a longitudinal view of mm -hmm. how these conferences evolved. Maybe tell us, starting, you know, back in 2009, what the conversation was about then and how it's evolved since. Yeah, so I, th I think the conversation has been, and, and I'm sure, you know, other guests might have, <laughs> might have referenced this, but it, it was very much this discussion early on of, like, you know, M Werner Vogels would come for the CTO of Amazon and, and, and do this hard sell on Amazon Web Services and cloud computing, and the, just the notion that this is why you would want to do, this is why you'd want to run stuff yeah. you know, in, in a cloud, and this is why you would want to outsource all these things. And this idea that, you know, the, the, it, it, was, it was just a new concept, the idea that you would want to do this. And then the people talk about security and you know, this analogy, like, well, you keep your money in a bank, you know, so you'd, naturally you would want, and, and you trust the bank, so you should trust this cloud provider, right? And there, it was this very, you know, like just this early discussion of, is this a thing? Can we trust it? But what was the alternative, or what were the alternatives at that time? Well, they were VMware. Yeah. And they were running on no run. sort of virtualization layer at all. Hug the server. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so, I mean, those were the options. And it, it's, it's funny because, yeah, and, and today the discussion is not like why you would do that, it's what's the best practice? It's like you're going to do that. What's the best practice and how efficient can you do it? And you know, I mean, what do, how, like, or it's maybe it's just how much, right? But it's not, yeah, it's not even a question anymore that you would do that. And then I think another thing that I thought was fascinating actually was we had a lot of talk about uh, databases and NoSQL databases and stuff at the early structure conferences. Yeah. And there was this debate, well, like, well, SQL can't scale and, you know, NoSQL, here comes Couchbase and MongoDB and Cassandra and all these things are coming around and they're gonna, oh, Oracle's so dead. <laughs> like, but then in time, <laughs> As, I mean, this is kind of the evolution, right? But that we've come back, and this is, I think this is the case in a lot of things. <laughs> some, of the, some, some of that excitement, I think, was necessary to, to get attention, but then it, it was dialed back, right? <laughs> or co-opted, <laughs> well, yeah, to some extent. To some extent co-opted, and to some extent you said, okay, yes, this, okay, these, are, these are legitimate. It's not as if this is a stupid idea, but <laughs> we're still gonna run MySQL. I talked to so many, companies now it seems like or you know I was just say so many but enough and some name you know some everyday type name companies and they're like yeah we tried this 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 we're running on like Ruby and Mongo or MySQL now <laughs> because it works and people know it so all things kind of come around I think and so we're very excited that we I think we dial it back as as kind of a thing that's happening. I, I want to touch on that mostly because I mean databases are central to all applications and they sort of almost dictate the architecture um, of, of a core part. And the NoSQL databases basically rose up for, for two reasons as I understood them. One was they were more s scalable because they relaxed the mm -hmm. constraints of tr you know, rigid transactions. But they were also more flexible because they didn't make you spell out exactly where you're gonna put your data before you put it in. Um, but people moved away from MySQL, because MySQL never dealt with those two realities. What are, how are people using MySQL and still accommodating that scalability and flexibility? Well, I, I think what you've seen is, uh, you know, over the years, I mean, the, the flexibility part is probably, I mean, is, is still an issue to some degree, I would, I would imagine, but, you know, if you have your, if your use cases, if, if, you, if you know what you're doing enough, I mean, if, and MySQL makes sense, it makes sense, you're gonna do it, right? Now, the scalability question, I mean, there's been a lot of, you know, this was term new SQL that was kind of quoted, companies trying to do this, yeah. but I think we just look at a Facebook, any of, I mean, any large web company now is pretty much still running MySQL as far as I can tell, and, 
you know, and they just put their own they're, they're layer sharding on it. it. They're doing yeah. all sorts of things to make it scalable. I mean, Facebook had a whole team around, you know, my scaling <laughs> my SQL. There's a whole, there's a project that I think it was announced last year. It was called Web Scale SQL, and okay. it was Facebook, Twitter, Box, Google. All these companies huh. said, "Hey, here's what we learned, and we're going to do this project." So it, it it was just it was just funny to me the all the excitement that happened. Facebook invented Cassandra, right? But then, <laughs> you know, it kind of it, it, you know the 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 excitement wears off after a point, and you get back down to what's what's real I, and i don't think that's the only technology you're going to see the same thing happen with so so let's go to other technologies so we we saw the sort of scalability and partial co-opting uh you know of sql or of the NoSQL databases what were some of the other things that came along that perhaps looked like they were going to be a if not a panacea you know a big fix but that didn't pan out uh i mean i i think I, I think you could go back and talk about, and then and this is still evolving, but the hybrid cloud, the private cloud, OpenStack <laughs> was a thing. When OpenStack came along, people said, oh my God, this is, you know, look at these, this is going to, we need this, uh, this alternative to Amazon and VMware, and this is going to be it, and look at all these companies backing it. And then in time, well, I mean, I don't even think we need to get, go into too much detail. It, it hasn't proven to be that panacea in most cases. I think containers are going to be a thing where, there's, there's a lot of excitement about Docker and Kubernetes and these things now, and understandably so. On the other hand, that's not, you know, the, the whole world, I don't, I don't foresee moving to Docker containers anytime soon. Um, you know, when we talk about how Google runs, Google still runs, you know, it's resource isolation, it's containerized, yeah. but, it, but it's not Docker, right? It's not, it's not as if that notion of, of, of containers begins and ends with that sort of thing. So I think we need to have a, just, just a broader view and, and, and take these things and really understand. You know, I, I think it's an, people need to think about these things. They, they need to, and this is why I like these early discussions. But, you know, then, then when it comes down to actually putting it in production and, and building companies around it, I think, I think you know, you pull, that's when they, you start seeing be pulled back a little bit. Okay, so um, looking out a couple years, what are the things, um, and we know you're uh, partial to, um, <laughs> I might M mesos, um, but what do you think the world would look like um, in a couple of years when we come back and you know talk to you, including you know what how mes mesos might remake things? Well, I, so I mean, I think I, I also I mean, I, I pardon my my, my bias, but I'm sure you've had other people from companies that I'm talking, so I'll, I'll give my spiel. But um, I, I think that if you look at what mesos and, and mesosphere are, are trying to do, I mean. You know, I'll, I'll, the idea is essentially to build what we call a data center operating system. But the idea is, you, you take all your resources, you look at them as one big computer, like like Google does, for, by and large, and you start programming against against those APIs. And you, so you stop. You don't have the notion of why well, I, well, I had a VM. So if I had like whatever four, if I had four servers, and I, I apply, I take, I use a hypervisor on that. Now right. I maybe I have sixteen servers, right? right? And now, so I have 16 servers to manage. Our idea is I have four servers. Now I have one computer. It just has the resources of all four servers. Got it. And I'm going to write a job that says, not I need this, this many nodes or machines. I'm going to write a job that says I need this much CPU, this much RAM, this much storage. And you just let the software deal with where that goes. You don't have to That's a big spend advantage. your time dealing about that. And, and, and so beyond that, then, then it's this idea of, well, well, one thing we will so you, you can install, you want to run these distri complex distributed systems? Yeah. That's, it's, it's, it's just easy to install. Much so we, easier. We'll run Spark here, you can run Cassandra here, you can run Kubernetes here, you can, you can, do all, you can use Docker, you can do all these things you want to do, but the, the, the interaction for developers and engineers and everyone, it's, just, it's a much simplified, flatter sort Understood. of existence. So. All right, we've had uh, Derek Harris with us, um, another uh, distinguished alum of the uh, of the old Gigaum and and the resurrected structure conferences, and we hope to see him again soon at at uh, future coverage at of structure these data in structure March. Structure data and then <laughs> structure connect. Um, we will be right back in a moment. This is George Gilbert, and we'll see you in a few minutes.